YouTubers on this incredibly warm mid-January day, presidential inauguration day. Uh, just uh, It's very warm out here. It's in the 60s, and I think some areas may hit 70 degrees. Just unheard of for January, and it's been like this for a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm loving it. But in February, you know we're going to pay for it. We'll probably freeze our you-know-what off. Uh, so, so, you know, since it's been so warm, I've actually got a lot done, and this is my project car. This is my 2000 Taurus I bought. Um, head, blowing head gasket on I've replaced the gaskets and all that. Now, that's another story in video. But uh, when I got it, the guy told me that the heater didn't work. So I uh, pulled the heater core hoses off and realized what the problem was, and it is plugged up. Now, a uh, quick story, I replaced the heads and everything on it, and it's running pretty good, although I do have a miss in that back cylinder. I'm going to have to do a compression check later and see what's going on with it. But this red hose you see here uh, comes out of the uh, water pump and goes back over here on the inlet side or the um, outlet side of the uh, engine where that, uh, the uh, hoses for the heater core would typically be. And that thing is right here. I'll hold it up here. I'll try to sim uh, simplify this as best I can. And it bolts on the engine like this. You got a small bolt right there. A little nut, I should say, that bolts on the firewall. And you got one right there. And you see I got my two little nuts kind of together so I don't lose them. And right there is where your heater hoses uh, pretty much bolt into your heater core. And like I said, that red hose I got there for now just replaces this because I've been flushing out the engine and opening up the radiator, getting all the crap out of it before I end up hooking everything back up, especially this uh, on the heater core. But we're going to go ahead and flush this out. I've got my bucket set up there and I've got my inlet hose and outlet hose. Now on this 2000, um, um, one other quick note is I hooked these hoses up and I got a clamp. I clamped them on the... Uh, uh, heater core when I had this intake off as I was finishing up the engine I thought it would just be a lot easier to get in there and do that then but I'm gonna have to take this air cleaner off and get in there and then hook all that but uh, on this 2000 model there is an EGR valve and it's kind of a pain in the ass the 2001s and on up don't have that so when you take this air cleaner off to get in there there's a lot more room in there to slide this in and out and to bolt it back on the firewall. The bolts for this, uh, on the firewall, one is right near that rain gutter, which you probably can't see, and there's one right up in there. And if you're wondering how to take this out, uh, go back and watch one of my other videos on the Taurus heater core flush, and I explain this uh, relatively uh, easy, I think. Okay, now having said all that, this is just your standard 5 8 tubing. I, I like the clear stuff because I like to watch what comes in and goes out. I bought this at one of the bigger uh, part of the uh, bigger uh, home stores and about 12 feet and I just cut it in half and it gives me plenty to get into the bucket and get into my hose. Now my setup for my hose is this basically a 5 8 connector onto a garden hose with a shiny little nozzle. This allows me to slide it in and slide it out and slide it in over there into the bucket without uh, doing too much work. And all I have to do is go turn the water on and I have no idea what's going to come out of this heater core but when I looked inside of it it was red, it looked like clay mud. Uh, when this engine blew a head gasket, they put um, some kind of stop leak in it, and it went through the engine, and you can see I still have some left in it. It's a little brown looking, but I'm going to continue to flush out the engine uh, a couple more times. But um, I don't know what's going to come out of this heater core, but we're going to go ahead and hook this water hose up, and we'll watch it and see what happens. Uh, I know a lot of Ford Tauruses, Tauruses, Mountaineers, uh, just about all Ford products and even other vehicles, uh, if you need to do this, uh, this is pretty simple to do. The only um, hard part is finding where to connect into your hoses, into your heater core. And like I said, on this 2000, there's not much room back here. And if you want to do spark plugs on the back side of this, uh, it might be better pulling all your teeth out with pliers. It was probably less painful. I'm not kidding you. It is very tight back here. All right, I've talked enough. Let me go ahead and hook this water hose up and set the camera up, and we'll see what comes out. All right, got my hose hooked up there, and uh, like I said, I just uh, have it where it's uh, kind of sliding in there. And I don't know which is inlet, and I don't know which is the outlet, but I'm just going to start with one hose and work my way. So here goes nothing. Wish me luck. So we'll go ahead and... I don't know if you can see me turn this on or not. Probably. Go ahead and turn this on. 
When you do this, do it slow first. Don't just white, uh, turn it wide open because you could blow your hoses off. And looky there, wow. Crap, it's coming out. Holy moly. That's crap that was in that heater core. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad I set the camera up so you could watch this. And you can see my hose there. Go ahead and turn it up. I think once I get all this flushed out, uh, I should have some pretty decent heat. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Okay, we'll just flush away here. Till it clears up. Anyway. I, you know, I always tell people if you blow a head gasket, unless you absolutely have to get it home, you know, you can put that stop leak in your engine, but if you don't, it is not worth it. I'm telling you, that stuff will mess up your engine. It gets into everything, plugs up heater cores, your radiator, and it is not worth it. Just have your car towed for a hundred bucks. It's not worth the extra effort, you know, to put a heater core in and all that. But wow, look at that stuff. That is crazy. But you can see the, the hose here starting to clear up a little bit. And the flow is uh, pretty good. So we'll do this a couple times. We'll stop it and we'll flush it again. And we'll uh, go back to the other hose and we'll do a reverse flush. All right, we'll, dump, we'll go over here and dump this out. And you can watch it. And we'll see if there's anything in it, like debris. That's just ridiculous. And this is stop leak, folks. This is why I say don't put stop leak in your engine. Unless it's life or death getting home. All right, oh wow. <laughs> Holy moly, no wonder there was no heat. That's just insane. This, see folks? All right, let's go ahead and keep flushing away here. All right, here comes bucket number two. Let's see what we get there. I'm actually kind of breaking a sweat out here in January. So it looks, yeah, it's a lot better. It's getting better, but, but you still see a lot of stuff still coming out. And with these heater cores, you got to have patience because they're, they are like little miniature radiators and they have a lot of little cores, tubes inside. The stuff will get blocked in. And it's hard to get out and you have to, like I said, reverse the hoses around. And eventually it'll come out, but the hose is looking a lot clearer. And it's got a good flow, which is very important. Which means that your engine will be able to pump the uh, hot antifreeze into your heater core and give you lots of heat. Uh, All right, turn that's full blast right there. If I stop and start it, you can see some of that stuff still coming out. Look at that. Wow. I know some of you guys are going like, well, oh, this is boring. <laughs> Not sure how much is in there, but this may take a few minutes. This is why I like to have the knob right here so I can adjust the flow. It makes it a lot easier. All right, we need to dump this out. And I'll look in there and I'll see if I see anything else. All right, still a little bit in there, but not as bad as it was. It's slowly going, so uh, do this again. We will have good heat, I'll tell you that when it's done. What I'm doing is uh, kind of turning the pressure on and off real fast. That will help loosen a lot of that stuff in the heater core. Like that. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to do this for about five minutes. I'm going to go back and forth with the hoses here. And as I finish up, we'll look at everything and I'll give you some pointers. But uh, this is basically how you can flush out your heater core if you're having heat issues. And that seems to be the story of my life in the last couple of months with these vehicles. All right, we'll keep flushing away. 
Okay, now I'm doing reverse flush. And I actually, when I did that, kind of back and forth, uh, turn this on real fast, on and off, I can actually see uh, the stuff coming out. So that's one way to get around. I'm going to try not to make this video very long. Right, that was my reverse flush. Let's see what we got. I guarantee you we got a lot of stuff that time because you're blowing it backwards and it really helps. And yep, we got some stuff out of there this time. But it's looking good. So uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and do a couple more flushes here and we'll wrap this video up. At least this will give you some hope if you don't have any heat. And this is one way you can try to get your heat back without ripping the heater core out because it's kind of a job. All right, folks, I'm just about on my, I'm on my last flush and... Uh, I've been doing this for about 15 minutes, back and forth, back and forth. You gotta have patience because if you don't, you could leave some contaminants in there and it will block your heater core, but you can see how nice and clean it's starting to look now. Hardly any debris coming out. And I think I've pretty much cured it. So if you do this and it works great for a few weeks and it gradually gets a little warmer, you may have to briefly go in there and just blow it out one more time because uh, you still may have some contaminants in the engine that will get trapped. But other than that, boy, it's a lot clearer. I'm probably gonna go with that. Uh, doesn't look like there's much of anything in there now. So um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, there's a look at it there. You can see it's hardly anything in there. It's pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the hoses. Well, I'm gonna stick it in the garage and hook the hoses back up and hook this um, guy here back up. Get all this back on there. Right, and there's what we got, just a couple of little pieces, but nothing really like it was. So I'm pretty happy. It looks like we got this uh, heater core pretty much cleaned out. So let me go ahead and put everything back together. And the next update, update I give you guys will be how the heat turned out inside of the uh, car and all that good stuff. So thanks for sticking with me for this five or six or seven minutes. I'm not sure how long I actually did this, but I'll have to check and see. Okay, one other uh, quick thing here I almost forgot to tell you guys. To be fair, I want to show you where I got my hose hooked up. And if I can zoom in there, you'll probably see it on the firewall right about there. You can see there's not a lot of room there, but I got a regular clamp on there because I wanted to put a lot of pressure on that uh, heater core and blow all that crap out of there. Yeah, so uh, I'm done and here's the end result. Here's the bucket and after, I tell you what, I flushed until I was blue in the face, but it, I got a lot of it, it's all gone. And you can see the water's pretty clean and hardly anything in there. So my heater should work again. And one final thing, make sure you put the water hose on this and blow this out because a lot of times you can have a bunch of stuff in here and when you get a put water back in your engine, you're gonna wonder where all that rusty, crappy debris stuff come from. So blow this out, make sure it's nice and clean, and uh, then you're on your way to a good heater. So uh, having said that, I will be back later, and we'll give you an update. I will give you an update on the heater, how it worked out, and what the heater feels like, and hopefully this will help you guys out. So uh, see you here a little bit later. All right, folks, a little update on the heater core situation. Uh, it's working really good. Haven't had any problems or anything, and my temperature gauge is right where it should be. And the heater is working really, really good. I need to get one of those digital thermometers, but uh, that took care of the problem. So uh, if you're gonna flush it, you know, just take your time at it, and uh, it'll seem like forever, but if you can get all that stuff out of there, it certainly will make a big difference in your heater. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. So uh, I've driven it for about four hours and no problems today. It's good because the sun's going down, you know. Don't let the sun go down on me, you know, so. But uh, looks like by, uh, well, we're in the middle, we're, we're toward the end of January almost. Looks like next month, February, they're saying it's gonna get really cold, so it's a good thing I'm taking care of this issue now. So heater's working just great. So there you go, good luck. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them, but uh, thanks for watching the video, and uh, don't pull your hair out, just, uh, Take your time and you'll get her done. All right, till next time, folks. I will see you later. Later.